keep, it had a couple days to get some rest after that great win Tuesday. Uh, it was an exciting night. Uh, the crowd was uh, was terrific. Uh, the uh, our team played so well, and uh, now we go into uh, down to Bloomington, where it's it's one of the more difficult places to to win in the league, and we're going to play a great game and play much like we did uh, Tuesday night. So, uh, but we've had two days really. It was important that. that Guys like Derek and Zach, in particular, get some rest. So we uh, we actually had them do nothing for two days other than lift weights. They didn't even do a dummy. Usually we do something with them, not even anything. We thought this was a this was a span that we very rarely get these days off to just nothing. So I think it will be very helpful for, for both of them, uh, in particular Zach, that he just needs a little bit of a rest. If you look at his stats in the five or six games prior to he got sick, they were outstanding. He had 20 against Wisconsin. He had 28 in another game. And all of a sudden he gets sick and he hasn't bounced back. So I think it's important to just get some rest and gets better. Okay. Coach Mahomet's kind of found a groove the last few games. Is it a matter of approach he's been taking or just seeing the shots? No, just the consistent work. You know, we asked to, we asked all our guys as we got into this league, we basically were very forthright with them where we thought they they were they, they they had to gain strength in, and one of those was his assertiveness, <coughs> his practice habits. Uh, they're not bad. When we talk about our kids not having an edge, or we talk about, we're not talking about kids that are dogs. We're talking about kids that are just this close to being a much better basketball player. He's one of those guys. He's got the athleticism to run by everybody, jump over people, guard people, but it's not always it, it, as easy for him as, as it may be for a guy uh, uh, like a Zach Novak, who was, it was the only way to survive. So uh, that's what I think he sees right now. That, boy, if I apply all my God-given talents with a little bit more, a little bit more effort, I'm, it's never a bad effort, but this like really intense effort, I can be a better player. Right. When after the, the last game, you're kind of talking about you know not not knowing when all the shots are going to fall and they yeah. look like they do uh, in the first half the other night. I wonder how does that kind of impact game planning and on the fly decisions in the course of a first half? You know, when you make yeah. your first five threes and suddenly, well, okay, yeah. now we can do this or that. And the other. Yeah. How do you kind of? I don't think it. I don't think it impacts us at all. I just think we go with the flow of it. Is you can't you can't say, hey, we're on fire. We're gonna call this. Now we would see a guy if a, we see a guy is really feeling it. But as far as a team thing, we're saying what works and what didn't work. And gradually, if you if you like say, okay, this is the only way we're going to win, and you just go, we're just going to shoot threes all night, all of a sudden you can get empty real quick. So I, I don't think there's too much in a game that happens uh, in, that you just say, okay, this is the way we're going to go, because adjustments are going to be made both ways. So uh, we are a good shooting team. Uh, the big, that's never been the big adjustment we had to make. The adjustment is... Can we finish possessions at the other half? At the other end? And I wonder if the follow up was that the first half of that game, I believe five of your first six shots were inside the arc. Um, was that designed? No, no, it was just we had a plan going in there. They had guarded us a certain way, and we and they did a wonderful job of it up in East Lansing. So we wanted to counter with something else, just a different look, and that different look allowed us to get inside the lane a few times. Chris? A couple things with Zach. He only had five shots, I think, um, Tuesday. Was that yep. by, how much of that was by design, or, or was it no, just, no design? Yeah. Just he wasn't open, or he didn't feel like he was open. So once again, we look at his overall numbers. You look at the depth of, of the bigger picture, the big data on him, and he's a heck of a player. And, and his uh, these last three games have been, you know, very disappointing for him. How was his reaction after the? The the, uh, the game, uh, the, the first two, was we went and shot like crazy the next couple of days. Probably good and bad. He probably didn't have some of that. I, I didn't see him have the bounce. Um, we, he's, he still never got the bounce back he had as a freshman and sophomore. Uh, but he's, I didn't see him have the bounce at all, and I think he's just tired. And then going in Indiana, obviously he's going to have something to prove. Yeah. And play well. There's <coughs> a discussion with him about playing with interest. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, all our Indiana. We, we grouped that as, uh, between Sean and and Doc, there's a lot of uh, Indiana connection down there. So that will be more about that. Uh, and see, just make sure that we, you'd love to have uh, every senior um, have those type of, if it's a homecoming, whatever, have, they just have a, a really good game on his home court. But uh, 
the Indian will have something to say about that too. Mark? On the Mahan thing, is there, this late in the season, is there some balance there too where you know that next year you know, he's going to have to play a large role and until the last two weeks he really hasn't? Yep. I mean, that you kind of have to balance some of that with like. Well, we try to do little bits more for him and he, he's got a lot of my confidence right now. But basically, it came a lot. It, during his his work habits in practice over the last three weeks, have just he's just taken that next step to really work even harder. He, like I said, there's never an issue where we're saying, "Boy, he's in, he's not practicing hard." It's it, it's it's just got to practice harder. And so I think we we've seen that. But no, he's one of, one of uh, uh, good is the enemy of great, and that's common with many of our team members that they will have some success and then let back. With him and, and most young men that, uh, that that play, that is a common enemy. And so his thing for next year will be about finish this year strong, and then I got to have a summer that is absolutely terrific. So I come back and improve player. And, in turn, and you played the three of them together. We saw in the second half him and and Xavier and uh, Derek, and I think that was the second half all together. I don't remember doing that, but I but. Brief period. Yeah, I might have. Did I? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty very unusual. Brief period. Yeah, I think we were running at such a simplified offense. We okay. could do. It. it was really simple, and we just. So that's you know, not only an option going forward. No, I, I. It could be. It's a good idea. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Did it, if it worked, it's really good. Salary. <laughs> John, you talked about edge. Obviously, uh, Derek played with a lot of passion yep. in that game. But what did you see on uh, on video from uh, Mo in that regard? You know, Mo has always competed. It's sometimes it's the the, com the uh, competing is um, is interpreted differently, right? That he may be trying to do things that he can't, you know, like swinging and missing on passes he can't possibly deny, so to give the guy other layup or give help where he doesn't need to help at all, you know, or deny where he doesn't need to not to deny. Putting it all together is the thing. But he's really, you know, practice. He practices hard. Um, he loves the game. And he loves competing against people. He loves that give and take of it. So I, I think that it, now and in years to come, that we got some. He's going to have some real rivals at other schools about who he's guarded many times. It's really going to be interesting. It's going to be fun because he's a great. He's you all know him. He's just a terrific kid. He wouldn't. He's just a terrific kid to coach, and uh, not it has nothing mean about him uh, other than he likes to compete. James, um, you mentioned how hard it is to win in Bloomington. I think you guys have lost your pace past the six meetings there. What is You're it about the numbers, man? I love the way you do your yeah. history, yeah. man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it about that venue or that atmosphere that makes it such? So they, they've had really, really good teams. They have had really good teams. We took Trey Burke and we took uh, Nick Stauskas and we took some really good teams. Uh, those were probably our worst losses. Is when we had our best teams. That is, it's a, a terrific place to play. Uh, it's really. It's, it, have you ever been there? It's straight up and down. Uh, it is very loud. They do a tremendous job from an atmosphere point of view, uh, choreographed and just student support. And you better play a really good basketball team there. And, you know, very few teams have come in there, whether it was whoever was coaching there, and get a W. So it's one of the, it, as you coach here longer and longer, it's one of the very, we've got to win every place on the road. Uh, but that's one that is, that is a tough place to win. So I think we've got a, a, a couple last second losses, maybe last minute losses, but our best teams had no chance down there. They were down early and really had trouble getting doing anything. So I can't put my finger on it other than they got, they, they've had a really good run of players and a really good coaches over time. Uh, you said after last game a guy like Xavier playing well could allow others to play mm -hmm. with an edge for the whole game. Mm -hmm. Did you mean that they'd be you know, better rested yes. or more? That, okay. Yeah, if we could just get him, and like you said, it, and it's, it's Saudi's suggestion to just make things really simple when he's in the game for us. Not that he can't, like I said, not that he can't handle it, but it just may make it, he may be better at this this right now. And so, because every game's an adjustment. Every game, okay, we're, this is how they're going to play us, so we're going to do this, this is how we're going to play it, we're going to do this. And gradually it gets natural for you, right? But for him right now, as, as a freshman, we said, well, we got to get him on the floor. What's the best way? All right, really dummy down some stuff and just let him go. Because he is a bright kid now. He is bright. But just the timing's off when all, you got all these things coming in front of you. And he hasn't had the game moments that you'd like to have. All right? So we can't wait for it. we got to just sort of force it in there. But if we can get him more minutes, Derek gets a little bit more rest. But maybe Zach and Muhammad get a little bit more rest. Maybe he got a little more fight in him at the end.
okay, and then following up on playing on the road, and I think people who didn't play think about literally the travel and then the fans. W what else is there that maybe people it, want to know about? At this level, it ain't about, it's not about the travel. We're going to go okay. to a beautiful plane, and we're going to be there <laughs> an hour, and we're going to stay at a great hotel, and the meals are incredible. No, it's, it, I, I can't tell you... I can't tell you, you know, what it is. It's, you know, they practice there every day. Their fans are rooting for them. It's everything in every sport. Uh, and uh, to win on the road has been is very difficult for, for all, any team at any time. And we've done the best we can. We haven't been stellar at it. We haven't been like a Wisconsin has been on the road. Uh, but we've, we've been okay. Uh, but the last couple of years we haven't been. And it had a lot to do with the roster that we had. But it is, it, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult. I don't know how many of you have ever been out there when there are eight, eighteen to 20,000 people yelling at you when you're trying to run stuff. It's not easy. Not easy, even easy to coach. You know, you're trying to put your time, your, 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 get your stuff, your stuff together, and the people are screaming at you. And it's, it is, it's interesting. So we'll prepare for it again. And uh, you know, we we're not proud that we haven't got a win yet. Uh, but if you look at the. Uh, UCLA and South Carolina, probably nobody's going to win there. So we didn't get off to like a good non-conference start, right, with playing on the road. Uh, and now the, all these games right there, we've been, we led at Wisconsin, we led at Iowa. Uh, I don't know if they, we didn't lead at Illinois. Where was the other loss? Michigan State. Michigan State, we led in the second half. We led in the second half and we led at UCLA. We led in four of those six games in the second half. Just finishing them is, is just really hard to do. Great, thanks. Following up on X, um, I know it was only a couple of possessions, but has what, did that kind of performance give you more confidence to give him more minutes? Yeah, more yeah. Forward? You got you have to do it. You have to do it in in games. You have to do it in practices. And you have to do it in games. It's that simple. Um, that they have to show me show me in practice what they do, and he's been showing that more and more. And then, but did uh, it take did it take ahead. that one? moment in the game yeah because you, you said you've seen it in practice but did it take that one moment game to say okay i can give them more minutes now yeah for the next game yeah they gotta, <laughs> gotta, gotta keep doing that i mean yeah so it, it is it's, it's easier decision when you see what i see every single day and then you see the growth and how slow or quick it is it doesn't make a difference that's when you make an adjustment of how much you can use it but uh, a foul trouble an injury sometimes there's tough we did no idea aubrey dawkins could shoot like that. He hadn't done it in, even in practice, and all of a sudden we throw him in a game as a freshman, and he makes six threes or five threes in the first games that I think Karras was out uh, two years ago. Him and, and all of a sudden, we didn't know that, and all of a sudden we find out he's a gamer. He's a gamer. He's a guy that just can, he doesn't maybe not show it, but he really shoot. You just don't know until they're in there, but you don't want to just throw it against the wall sometime and say, well, if he falls on his face, we lose. At least we'll learn something. No, you don't want, you don't want to lose those games. I don't I don't care who it is that we're playing. You try to win those games, so it's a it's a it's a difficult balance to, to try to find out what you don't know and still win the game. Zach, uh, against Illinois, Indiana, Michigan State, I mean turnovers have become a strength for your defense. What what changed to enable that? And then I mean, what, have you seen anything in practice? I, th I think Coach Donlin's defense right now is making his pressure a little bit higher, of being more <coughs> involved uh, on the ball and making their catches a little bit different. Uh, I think we fly around a little bit better. Than we have, um, and, and then but some of the games they just you know they they, they, they walked or the ball went through their hands and we had nothing to do with it. It just was there, you know. Um, and maybe you hurried them up just enough. I don't know, but it's I don't think it's a strength. But for some reason we're turning people over a lot more than we have in the past. Not a lot, but more. When you have a game like you did in the last time out against Indiana. Like how how much are you able to even take from that from for yeah. for another matchup when that game was so off the rails? So yeah, early. brand new game. I just think it's a brand new game. That that they're they're so capable of scoring points, and uh, for us to go and, and score fifty and a half and ninety overall was was you know that's just difficult to do right now. I, I think the the uh, the OER was like one of the highest ever recorded ever. So it was it was a. Uh, uh, just a, a great offensive performance. Now we got to go down there. I we never. I don't think you can ever mirror that again. Um, but we have to just. We got to pick it up with our defense, and hopefully that we have some type of success. So that kids have confidence, even though I'm sure that Coach Crean and Indiana have a completely different plan. Make sure this does, that not only um, that they beat us, not alone, let alone let us win by any amount of uh, points. And, and 
they, there's been a few different versions of that team this year with all the injuries and stuff. Now they have Blackman back. Yeah. But um, what have you just kind of seen from them on tape in the last, their, mainly their last two losses? I think that their team actually has grown as far as a team. I think they were very uh, James Blackman orientated before this. And the injury, although it did not show up in wins and losses, probably uh, their, their their guards are played have played really well. The uh, the point guard, uh, Newkirk. Newkirk is just this has been give him a great opportunity. You know he's a fourth year guy, a transfer. He's been around, um, so the, he has really benefited from this opportunity to be more of a scorer. So I think when you got you got to guard Blackman and be all over him. Uh, we know Johnson's really good, but Newkirk now we we put Newkirk in a different category when we was here. He was a guy that we were going to you know, not not be as worried about shooting the ball. Now he's he's been the best shooter on their team. Him, him and the big fella, Thomas Bryant, have been the two, the two best shooters on their team the last five games. Pulls out with Biggers. John, um, excuse me. I know that you know probably game planning every day kind of changes, but how much do you look at uh, like recent games and, and given the back and forth nature of the big time, I mean, last night with Wisconsin and Nebraska and then Indiana and Purdue, how much do you pay attention to those? Because you're going to face both those teams. Yeah. So do you spend a lot of time studying that, or is it just that happened? You don't. You no, don't I look at it? like last night I watched the, the game just because I'd rather watch it on video because I can replay things much better. But I watched that game, but then I had my eyes on the phone. I, I don't know. I maybe woke up at three or four to see who won the game. Uh, and just looked at it, but yeah, I keep my eye on it because I know that it's such a. I wasn't surprised at all if Nebraska would have won that game. Wisconsin's just been incredibly good at winning close games. I mean, incredibly good. And uh, so the kid misses the two foul shots. I mean, that they didn't do anything great there, but they do uh, when they get to that defensive end and offensive end. They're really good. But I pay attention to it, yeah, because I, I it's it's what we do for a living. But I, I'm not like pouring over that box score this morning saying, okay, we play them next week. No, it's Indiana. The only thing I care about is Indiana right now. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you.